Did you inherit or did you develop your common touch? You see, common touch, as I've said before, is a kind of derogatory term, isn't it, really? Yes. It's kind of trying to be all things to all men. And I'd rather not. Look, somebody as, as famous, well-known and, and lauded as you, and indeed myself, we know very well... In that well, order. Well, yeah, quite. We know very well that, <laughs> that, you know, for everybody who loves us, there will be somebody who loathes us. Why would when you appear, When one? you appear on television, that's what happens. You can't expect more than 50% approval because not everybody is going to love you. So the common touch is an illusion, really. You know, you just come on, do your best. I remember, for instance, um, the great Eamon de Valera, who was yes. the outstanding politician in Ireland of the last, say, 150 years. He used to say, whenever I want to know what the Irish public want, I look into my own heart. Mm. And of course, when he looked into his own heart, <laughs> he found what they wanted was thatch cottages, growing their own vegetables, going to mass every Sunday, and having the odd dance at a crossroads. And of course, it reduced the country to penury. <laughs> <laughs> he made it very common. <laughs> yeah. There is a desire, though, in this age that, that for, for public figures to be seen to have what I agree with you, what is wrongly called the common touch. Uh, and we've even seen this with the new Pope. Mm. Well, yeah, I think a great friend of mine, Father Brian Darcy, who's been held in bad odour by the Vatican uh, for speaking too freely in Ireland about paedophilia and all the rest of it, a great man, he says what this new Pope has to do is identify with the public. Mm. He, he has to be part of his flock. They have to feel that he is part of them and, and they part of him. And um, I think the last Pope didn't quite have that common mm. touch. And very few have had since John the Twenty Third. So, and I think the Archbishop of Canterbury, who I saw installed, I wasn't in the, in the church, but... Really? Um, no, Why not? Wasn't asked. Anyway, I get asked very little these days. Oh, you get asked about your hair. You're here. Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that bad. No. This is the only thing you have to come and Time sit up to midnight. I'm very grateful for the work. With a wee dug. I'm very grateful for the work. Well, we're very good to but see the... you. You used to deliver this man's post, I'm I told. Did. Mind you, yeah. every time we have anybody famous on, you say, oh, I used to deliver I that man's post. I knew you'd say that, yeah. Um, was burn him, it, burn him in Buckingham. Did he have the common touch in these days? He didn't give me a Christmas box. I've just reminded him about that. I'm going to see him right for a few quid when we're finished. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Do that Just now. He's an MP. Ten quid. Oops. But uh, they apparently have fallen on hard times. So oh, that's true. Yeah, without the yeah, various little fiddle fiddles. Fiddles. Expenses expenses anymore. Uh, the Tory MP, the Tory cabinet ministers often struggle to be seen to have a common touch. Do you, do you know, when I, when I first became a Member of Parliament, I was very interested in energy and I was put on the flagship bit of legislation that year, which was the privatisation of the gas industry. I went to the Christmas party at number 10 and Margaret Thatcher, the Prime Minister, said, What's on your mind at the moment, Michael? And I said, Prime Minister, at this moment, the gas bill, because I was legislating on the gas bill. She said, the gas bill. That must be a worry at this time of year. She was Prime Minister, and yet to her, gas bill meant no. the bit of paper that flopped through, through the, the door, door. not Just the flagship <laughs> piece of her own legislation. Yeah. That was the common touch. D did Alan Johnson deliver that bit of paper through the door? <laughs> <laughs> or was that not one that he, he delivered? I, don't you think that, that what people like is is n not people trying to have a common touch. They like authenticity. Absolutely. Be who you are. I mean, in a Absolutely. sense, Boris Johnson's a good example of that, isn't he? He's not really. No? Um, oh. You're a good example of, oh. of somebody who's um, not a great deal of talent, uh, but but still there. Limited. And, and people have a, a certain um, no, they just affection feel, they for just you. They just feel sorry. A, a small group <laughs> has a certain affection for you. I always think <laughs> Boris Johnson, I think, is, is a... Is, he's Molly, got, could is, you bite him? He's the common toff. The common toff, yes. Yeah. And the, 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 he always he strikes me as the kind of uh, the scapegrace, the, the, the second son the, of, the, of the, the great family, you know, that, that the, the yeomen all tip their forelocks to him, but, um, uh, and they, they smile at his indiscretions and they'll have a laugh with him, but they, they never put him in charge of anything. When you did uh, Radio 2, I think you, you had the biggest audience of any programme on Radio 2. I like to think two. so. but uh, Or was that just a lie that you yeah, put around? Yeah. 
Well, it worked because I believed it. <laughs> well, so congratulations. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but, I'm leaning against uh, an open door with you. <laughs> <laughs> I shall refuse to walk through. Uh, but you have to have some kind of empathy with the people took to you. They loved your voice. Look, they loved the self-deprecating humour. What you have to do? Well, I'm not going to give you a lecture on how to do radio or how to do television. Television is a bit more difficult. Radio. You can make contact. Mm. You can conduct a dialogue. You, you're not talking. And the audience is a theatrical concept. You're talking to individuals. You're try or maybe one or two people at most who are not paying a great deal of attention mm. anyway. They're in and out of the house. The problem with the television is that the old box gets in the way. Yes. So you can communicate far more easily on the radio. Yes. And it's more intimate. What I tried it? to do is create a kind of cachet, an ambiance, so that, for instance, if I threw out a Latin tag, some fella on a bicycle in Oxford would be listening and think, oh, I'm the only one who understood that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I think that's what you try and do. And you don't, you don't aim for the lowest common denominator. You're trying to aim as high as you possibly can. Communicate at the highest possible level. And I think we can all agree, without you having to reply, that Norman Baker is not the way to do it. <laughs> Just say no. No. Thank you very much. Well done. That Terry Wolby, great to see you. So good to, to have you on the programme. Thank program. you for the work.